Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. This is another opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. Mm -hmm. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast and give him freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if we do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that we do not believe. In this state, we should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that we do get, whether it be a gift of tongues or a gift of prophecies, what's next? It can or it will be used against you in the day of judgment. Fancy car. With that New said, time. peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that didn't make it, to the ones watching in on the camera. Uh, and no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. All right? You got any questions throughout, make sure you use the text message if you're watching in. Uh, that way you can get your questions answered. You don't ever want to learn from nobody who, who you can't ask a question to. Let's open up to uh, Luke chapter 17. Talk about a parable. It's Luke chapter 17, verse 1. Luke chapter 17, verse 1. What's today? The tenth. Today is the tenth. You have to work today, 10, huh? You have to work today. Did I have to work today? Yeah. yeah. Oh, today a veteran day, huh? Yeah. It <sighs> was tripping. You know what I'm saying? Trump was like that dude that got killed over serving the country. Like they know what he signed up for. You know what I'm saying? It's tripping over that thing. I was like, yeah, that's pretty cold. He got low. He low. He got a point though, but that is pretty cool. <laughs> I heard about it. I ain't never looked into it. Go down and keep it down. It looks. <laughs> you just give up. <laughs> I tried it already. <laughs> no one cares. 17, right, right? Luke chapter 17, verse 1. Then said he unto the disciples, It is impossible, but that offenses will come. But uh -huh. woe unto him through whom they come. All right, so when he's talking about offenses, he's talking about it's impossible that somebody ain't going to sin. It's, it's going to be impossible for somebody not to sin against you. All right, when he says offenses, he's talking about somebody sin. He's not talking about somebody necessarily just saying something rude to you or Somebody saying something that hurts your feelings or anything like that. He's talking about somebody sinning, right? Doing some, uh, committing some type of sin that is against you, right? So somebody stealing from you or somebody lying on you or something like that. Those would be the offenses in the context that he's talking about. So he's saying it's impossible, but that offenses must come. So he said somebody going to mess around and sin against you, right? He's just preparing the, preparing the thought. He said it's going to happen, but watch what he said. But woe unto him through whom they come. It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he cast into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. Uh-huh. So he said it would be, it'd be better for somebody to have a millstone cast around his neck, hung around his neck, tied around his neck, and then cast into the sea. In other words, you know what I'm saying? You know how they say the mafia do it. They tie something, you know what I'm saying, a brick to you and throw you in the water. He said that thing is... It's, it's more favorable for that to happen than for somebody to come and sin against a, a little one. When he's saying little one, he's talking about us, right? He's talking about anybody who's new to the faith, all right? Anybody who comes, to, comes to, and is new to the faith and causes somebody who's new to the faith to lose faith, he said, oh, that thing bad, all right? That thing is bad. You sin against them, that's bad, all right? Keep going. Take heed to yourselves if thy brother. Take heed to yourself. I mean, pay attention. If, All right, pay attention to what you're doing. Keep going. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. He said, if your brother trespass against you, trespass is a sin also. Right, just another word for sin. All right, so if your brother sin against you, what happened? Rebuke him. Uh, go to him and be like, why did you do that? And rebuke him. Right, be like, uh, but you know what, I ain't even going to say nothing about it because that's my brother. What is that? Rebuke him. Yeah, go to the button telling me that was wrong. That's book. I ain't about to be scared to tell you somebody wrong. You do something against me, that thing is wrong. 
right? A lot of people just think they, I mean, they think they be, they, they exercise humility, you know. I'm not even going to say anything. You said, no, it was wrong. I ain't about to go out of my way to tell you it was wrong, but if we call past again, that thing was wrong. I want you to know it. I'm past it now. We good. I just, that's all I have to say. You know what I'm saying? You was wrong. That's it. We can move on now. Right? Don't be scared to tell these people it's wrong. That's salvation in knowing that you're wrong. How you, how you ever supposed to get right? You don't know you're wrong. Ain't none of us just start off right. I don't let none of these people run their mouth and just say they always been right. Ain't nobody done that. We all had to be wrong at some point. How are we going to find out we right? How are we going to find out how to be right if we never understand or acknowledge the fact that we wrong? Nobody ever tell us that we wrong. Can't nobody tell me I'm wrong. This is, uh, keep going. And if he repent, forgive him. Right? So he said, if he repent, you got to forgive his butt. Right? Keep going. And if he trespassed against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turned again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. I got that. And the, right? Ain't no limits you can't put on. No, oh, I didn't forgave him seven times. I ain't this. No. Nah. He keep, he keep doing it. You darn keep forgive it. Right? This don't say nothing about you have to keep putting yourself in a position to get done wrong. It is saying, though, if it happened, you keep forgiving. Period. You know what I'm saying? Keep going. And the apostle said unto the Lord, increase our faith. All right? So they asked a question. This is what the apostles are talking about. They asked a question. They said, increase our faith. Watch Yahushua's response to this. And the Lord said, if ye had faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye might say unto this sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root. And be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. Uh huh. But which of you, having a servant plowing the or feeding cattle, will say unto him, By and by, when he has come from the field, go and sit down to meet? Right. So watch what he's doing now. He's saying, Listen. They asked for him to increase the faith. After that, he said, Man, if y'all just had a little bit of faith, I mean, the size of mustard seed, you look at this tree, you'd be like, Be thou plucked up, right? You just get plucked up. He said, That thing be plucked up. Then you'll be like. Go ahead and plant yourself in the seed. And it'll go and it'll obey you. He said, all you need is just the faith of his little seed, right? Then after that, he started to explain with them. Now tell me, which one of y'all, if y'all had a servant, what did he say? And said unto him, by and by, when he has come from the field, go and sit down to meet. Right? Who said unto him, hey, come here. All right? When he is in the field, say, man, come on, sit down and eat. What else after that? And will not rather say unto him, Make ready wherewith I may sup, and gird thyself and serve me till I have eaten and drunken, and afterward thou shalt eat and drink. Right? He said, That's my servant. Who gonna sit here and say, You my servant? I you I'm paying you to serve me. Then all of a sudden I'm gonna come in, uh, let me make you something to eat to the servant. I'm gonna make you something to eat. This is what you getting paid for. You get paid to cut my grass, right? I'm gonna cut my own grass and be like, Yeah, you just have a seat. That don't make sense. He said, which one of y'all going to pay somebody to do a job for you and then you do the darn job and then get them and serve them? Right? He said, that doesn't make sense. Instead, what you're going to do is if, if you got a servant that's supposed to make you food, what you're going to do is you're going to sit down and eat and after you done eating, be like, all right, you can eat. Right? I mean, I mean, what's going to happen? You go to McDonald's, right? You go to McDonald's, it's time for you to eat. Right? How many of us are going to be like, no, go ahead and take your lunch break, and then I'll be here when you're ready to take my order? That doesn't make sense. Go ahead and take my order. You at your job. You clock in. You take your break after I'm done. Right? That's, he just giving you something. He's giving you a parable. It just makes sense. Right? Let's see. Keep going. And will not rather say unto him, make ready wherewith I may sup, uh -huh. and bear thyself and serve me, till I have eaten and drunken, and afterward thou shalt eat and drink. Uh-huh. Does he thank that servant because he did the things that were commended him? I troll not. Right? He said, am I going to thank my servant just because he did what he was supposed to do? Y'all sure was like, nah, I don't think so. He said, that don't make sense. Right? Keep going. So likewise ye, when ye shall have done all these things which are commended you, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. All right? He said, let that be a lesson to us. If the master don't talk to the slave and be like, oh, thank you for doing what you were supposed to do anyway. He said, in that case, that's how you should look at yourself with, with me, with, with the most high God. Right? 
after you get done doing everything the Most High God commanded you to, I don't expect no darn thank you. Only thing you need to say is, I'm an unprofitable servant. I did what I was supposed to do. I'm an unprofitable servant. After you get done doing everything he commands you, all right, cool. I'm an unprofitable. A lot of people looking for things, right? A lot of people looking for, you know what I'm saying? I did this, so I can't wait for God to do something for me. I did that. I can't wait for God to do something for me. I think it's said and done. You know what I'm saying? I'm an unprofitable servant. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. I ain't doing nothing extra. Right? I did what I was supposed to do. Right? That's important for us to understand and look at. Right? Otherwise, we'll, we'll be set off. And you have to understand, he gave this parable in, the response for a que- or, uh, uh, in response to a request. They asked him to increase their faith. Right? He's like, how do you increase the faith? He's telling you. This is how you do it. If you view yourself this way, this is how you increase faith. Just do everything you're supposed to do. And when you get done with it, I'm like, yeah, I just did what I was supposed to do. Right? I'm an unprofitable servant. And leave it at that. He said, that's how you increase your faith. Right? It's not the answer that everybody else wants. They don't, you know, they looking for somebody, you know what I'm saying? You had, uh, we ain't got to grab it, but you remember, uh, you remember uh, Naaman? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You remember Naaman? You know what I'm saying? He going down, he had leprosy. Right? The prophet, the prophet was like, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Uh, what do you tell him? He tell him, uh, go and see Elisha. They go and see Elisha. No, after he talked to it, no, Elisha told him go, go to go uh, Washington, uh, Jordan. Jordan. Go Washington, Jordan. Yeah, he is like Jordan. You know what I'm saying? All these bodies are running around here. You gonna tell me go to the Jordan? Jordan wasn't nothing. He was like, you gonna tell? I think he is from Syria. Yeah. He was like, man, I ain't about to go to no Jordan. What am I gonna go to the Jordan for? Right? He said, it. if master. If the prophet would have told his, his servant, told his, the, he like, Matt, if the prophet would have told you to do some great grand thing, you would have did it. Everybody looking for some great grand thing. What am I here? Just dipping some water in the Jordan water? That's crazy. That's like somebody tell you, you know what I'm saying? You in California. Listen, you in Hawaii. Somebody tell you, you know what you should do? Go to Lake Mead. You know what I mean? You just go to Lake Mead, dip in the water three times. You don't look at these people. I ain't know the Lake Darn Mead is. That's crazy. That was the Jordan was for us. Jordan, Jordan, you going to Israel? Oh, please. I ain't going to no Jordan River. That's crazy. Like, I keep my leopards. Instead of going to Jordan, I keep my leopards. We good. Right? But he ended up doing it. Skin was all like, it's as soft as, it's as new like a baby skin. Right? After you get done. Because everybody's looking for some grand thing. I want God to speak to me. You got people right now praying, God proved to me that you real. All this stuff. I ain't saying he ain't going to do it. All I'm saying is, you looking for some grand thing. You know what he waiting for you to do? Just obey. And after you get done, say, I'm an unprofitable servant. Stop looking here feeling like he owe you something. He'll owe you a darn thing. If he give it to you, it's a blessing. If he don't give it to you, it's right. Grab uh, 1 Timothy chapter uh, 6. Your butt is bad. You know you got a bad butt, too. That's your problem. That's all right. You have a long, hard life, too, mess with me. Mm-hmm. Six, verse what? This is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Give me verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1. Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, uh-huh. that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. Uh-huh. And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them because they are brethren, uh-huh. but rather do them service because they are faithful and beloved, partakers of the benefit. Mm-hmm. These things teach and exhort. If any man teach otherwise, he said, if any man teach otherwise, and consent not to wholesome words, uh-huh. Even the words of our Lord Yahushua the Messiah, uh-huh. and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, uh-huh. he is proud, knowing nothing, but darting about questions and with in strifes of words, whereof comes envy, strife, railings, evil, sermonings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and what destitute of the truth, this? supposing that gain is godliness. From such withdraw thyself. He said, "From such withdraw thyself." Right? Get your butt away from him. That's why I tell y'all, y'all watch it online, y'all do all these things. You get somebody you can ask some questions to. You find out these people teach otherwise, 
You better withdraw yourself. Don't be listening to that stuff. A lot of these people are going to these churches. They know these churches is wrong. They know these pastors ain't teaching nothing. They know these Hebrew like Hebrew is like rabbis and all this stuff ain't teaching nothing. They know it. But they'll sit there and they'll say, you know what? Some of what he say is good. He teaching otherwise. Books say you gotta withdraw yourself. If I were to teach otherwise, you gotta withdraw yourself. That's why I teach it according to the book. I'm gonna say it just like the book say it. Why would I say it any other way? Even Peter tell he say. He say, uh, speak as the oracles of God. What am I, why am I saying I run my mouth like anything else? No, my mouth, my, my, my book with it. It's important. Got to be careful out here. Grab, uh, what did he say? What was the last thing he said? From such withdraw thyself. He said, from such, with, read that verse for me, a whole verse for me. He is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about, wait. He is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof comes envy, strife, railings, evil sermishings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. All this, stuff, with all, this stuff is what you see. all this stuff is what you see in these Hebrew Israelite camps. All this stuff is what you see in, 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 these, uh, in these churches. Right? Because that's what this stuff produces when people lie on the book. They're teaching otherwise. It produces all the stuff that he just named. Right? In these churches, what do they think? Gain is godliness. Right? They feel like if I do this, I mean, if I sow my seed, God going to give me. If I do this, God going to give me. Right? If I do that, God going to give me. They think gain is godliness. Right? That's why we're supposed to look at it and say, I did what I was supposed to do. I'm an unprofitable servant. I didn't, unprofitable me, I didn't do nothing for my master. Right? With or without me, my master good. I'm unpro I didn't bring him any profit. I didn't do him any better. Right? We have to have that attitude like, man, God, God, with or without me, I'm here for the ride. I'm here because I'm getting something out of it. I'm happy to serve you. I'd rather be serving you than to be out there. That has to be our attitude. Otherwise, we otherwise we in the mindset where well, gain is godliness. And watch what he say next. Gain is godliness, right? From such withdraw thyself. Uh-huh. But godliness with contentment is great gain. You know what godliness with a contentment look like? I'm an unprofitable servant. Food and raiment. That's it. I think he said it. Go ahead. For we brought no we brought nothing into this world. Uh-huh. And it is certain we can carry nothing out. Uh huh. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. Give me some cold, give me some food. We good. I'm an unprofitable servant. What else I'm gonna be? All right? That's what that's what got Moses along. Moses wasn't asking for a whole bunch of stuff. Moses was just like, man, I just want to free the people. All right? Most I got called him out, told him, look, man, this is what I got for you. You know what I'm saying? Most I got spotted him out. He saw he was hurt by the oppression of his people. Remember, Moses, Moses came from the big house. Right? Moses did wasn't raised with the people necessarily. Right? He was raised with, with Pharaoh. He was he had some privileges. Right? But he came out, he saw his people, he ain't never forget that. He was looking like, nah, man, that thing crazy. Killed one of the Egyptians, messing with one of the people, and he got out of Dodge. Right? Most like God knew what he was doing. He called him out. He said, you know what? Listen, why don't you go out and why don't you free the people? So that's what we've been looking at. We've been looking at Moses going through and, and taking all the steps to get the people to the place that, where the Most High God wanted to get them. Right? But it, it's, it's tough for a person to look at what they do and say, I'm an unprofitable servant. But that's one of the highlights of Moses. Moses' things was he was a, a, a man of humility. Right? So let's go to Exodus chapter 19. It's Exodus chapter 19. All right, we let reread uh, last week. We uh, we were in the wilderness, right? The people spoke. The people was hungry. People were thirsty. We had nothing to drink. You know what I'm saying? So the manna came and the uh, and uh, and the uh, uh, quail. You know what I'm saying? Was dropped down. You know what I'm 
I'm saying, where we didn't like it. We got so much that the books say it was coming out of our darn nose. Right? So all these things were happening. And it gave us an understanding that we have to rely on the Most High God. All right? Most High God purposely put us in situations where we had severe needs that we weren't used to, where did we, some people would lash out against them, and some people would just, you know, be waiting. All right? But he did that purposely to test us and to put us in the place. He tested us in the, in the wilderness. That's what it was all about, a test. All right? That's no different from, from anything. That's how God operates. When we look at these things, it has to be an example for us. It has to be something to teach us the way God operates. If we're not looking at the Bible and understanding how God operates, we made a mistake. A lot of people only want to look at the New Testament and try to understand how God operates. Right? So they see Yahushua come. And they see the love and the forgiveness. And they see all these different things. Which is no different than what we see in the Old Testament. The Old Testament... All you see is, you see a combination of, of the, the, the early things that are happening. What you see in the New Testament is this is after all of this history, right? After everything has been exhausted, now you see a different approach. You see, or not even a different approach. You see the, the fulfillment of an approach, right? So we look at that. If you only look at that fulfillment, you missed all the history that led to that. So you're thinking... Anything that happens, you get right here. It's like, no, no, no. You have to go through all of this to get this type of reaction out of the Most High God. For him to give his son, you have to, you have to do a whole lot for him to give his son at the end of the day. Right? It's not like that's just, oh, okay, you sin. Here's my son. That's not the first option. He did a whole lot before he got there. Right? And that's what we want to understand. We want to understand the mind of God as much as he's revealed to us. Then we can look at God, we understand his character. Once we understand his character, then we have an expectation we can live up to. Right? We can understand the book that he's given us. We don't make a misunderstanding. We don't, we don't jump off to the sides and, and start connecting dots that's no, no longer really there. Right? This is Exodus chapter 19, verse 1. In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they. In right, Jordan. so you remember, last week we dealt with the first month and we dealt with the, the second month. Remember, the first month is when we came out. book told us, this is the month of Abib, this shall be the first month unto you. Right? Then after that, when we were talking about the manna and all that, it said the second month, in the second month. So we only three months in. Right? Three months in, and where did we come to? The children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt. The same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. For they were departed from Rephidim and were come to the desert of Sinai and had pitched in the wilderness, and there Israel camped before the mount. All right? So we came to the desert of Sinai. All right? Keep going. Excuse me. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say unto the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, mm -hmm. Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bare you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Right? He said, You see what I did to the Egyptians, right? All those signs and those wonders, all the miracles. He said, Y'all saw that. Then he said, I brought you on what? Eagle's wings. He said, I brought you on eagle's wings. And I brought you to, uh, to what did he say? Myself. He said, I brought you on eagle's wings, and I brought you to myself. Right? He said, I carried you. Go to uh, Isaiah 40. Talk about these eagle, eagle's wings. We're going to hold what we got. We're going to come back there. But let's go to Isaiah chapter 40, verse 27. Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speaks, O Israel, my way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God? That's Isaiah chapter 40? Yeah. Verse 27? Mm-hmm. Right. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, of, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, faints not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. He gives power to the faint, and to them that have no might, and he increases in strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. Give me a verse. What verse is that? 
Give me verse like 29 or 30. I just read it. 30? Yeah, I just read them both. All right, keep going. With they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall, go. they shall mount up with wings as eagles. Right? They, they shall, shall mount up as wings with eagles. What else? Wings as, with wings as eagles, they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Right? He told us all we have to do is wait on them. You wait on the Most High God, you'll mount up with wings like eagles. Right? And you won't faint. That's what he's talking about. He's he, these things have to tie back. When, when he told us, I brought you to me on, with, with eagle's wings, right? That has to mean something to us. So then years later, when Isaiah is prophesying, he said, y'all going to mount up like eagles. We supposed to, that's supposed to trigger something with us. We're supposed to look at that and be like, that's just like what happened when you saved us from Egypt. Right? Then that's why when we read, uh, go to Revelation chapter 12. All right? All these things have to trigger something in us. All these little key words that we look at, all these ideas, that's what it really is, ideas. Away from the words, it's about the idea. Right? These things have to trigger something. It has to make us say, ah, I understand now. Right? I get what you're saying. It's Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. Verse 13. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. Mm -hmm. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle. That given she what? Two wings of a great eagle. What does a woman represent? Israel. Right? We can prove that out, but go watch our go watch the the series on uh Revelation, the revelation of Yahushua. Right? That she might fly into the wilderness into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. The most high God can serve us with eagles. Uh, he can uh, save us with uh eagles' wings. Right? He done it before, he'll do it again. All this stuff is supposed to trigger us back to one specific time. Like just like I did it then, I'll do it again. And he's going to do it again. Right? Because a lot of people don't understand what's about to happen. All right? He's going to do it again. He's going to get us up out of here again. We're going to go on right back on to, uh, to the wilderness. And then we're going into the land. Just like, uh, like we're about to read now. All right? This time that we spent in the wilderness and we went into the land, it's going to be a repeat of that. And there's going to be a whole lot of people to, in Egypt. Do you think everybody was righteous that came out of Egypt? No. Some people were just along for the ride. Right? Some people were there. I mean, we all Hebrew. We all Hebrew. Some of us, I mean, I like Egypt. But everything going down, let's just, I mean, let's just put ourselves, let's just imagine how that thing would go. I like Egypt. I'm a Hebrew, but I like Egypt. Sure, I'm a slave. Things ain't the best. But I ain't the worst off slave in the world. Right? I'm enjoying things around here. Then this Moses guy comes around. He's like, yo, let my people go. I see this happen, I'm like, man, that thing crazy. I ain't, I ain't really weird. What are you talking about? All of a sudden, plagues start to happen. All the plagues hitting only the Egyptians, not me. At that point, I'm like, all right, I'm a Hebrew. I like Hebrews. <laughs> right? So then, it's time to get out of Dodge. Okay, I'm rolling with the Hebrews. Let's go. Everything cool. Everything cool at this point. You didn't get hit with the plagues. All your Egyptian friends did get hit with the plagues. Now we gone. We about to get up out of here. All of a sudden, it's been two weeks and I haven't had anything to eat. Who you think gonna start fussing at that point? The people that was like, I can't stand Egypt, or the people that's like, I kind of like Egypt. Last week, what did they say? When it was time to eat? At least in Egypt we had fish freely. At least in Egypt we can have some fish. And look at white man, you can put me back in Egypt. I'm good. I didn't really want to come anyway. Who do you think the Most High God was trying to weed out at that time? He trying to weed out the people. A lot of people just coming along. It's going to be the same thing here. It's going to be a lot of people. They doing real good out here. They, I mean, they enjoy it. They enjoy it. The rules switch up. They going to be like, I'm Hebrew. I'm Hebrew too. Black power. What you talking about? You know what I'm saying? Hebrew. I ain't no African. You talk, I ain't no Christian. What you talking about? Hebrew. 
He gonna start dressing up like him and everything, putting on the big, you know what I'm saying? He gonna ride the the star, thinking they doing something. You know what I'm saying? Nah, I'm Hebrew. Look, tassels, everything. What you talking about? Don't call me uh, Joseph no more. You better call me Yahoo Puku. Right? They gonna say all these things. Then we gonna be looking at them like, all right. Then we get out there, things gonna get rough. Who, who you think God weeding out? He told you, he said, some of them, I'm gonna make pass under the rod. In the other words, I'm rejected. I'm going to deal with them right there in the wilderness. Face to face, he said, I'm going to deal with these people. They're going to get rejected. They're going to get left off the same way in the wilderness. This is what we have to pay. If we don't learn from this stuff, if we don't understand what we're reading and we don't learn from it, it puts us in a position where we will lose. This stuff will catch us off guard. There's no reason to. It was before. That was new. Right? All this is written for our example. We have no excuse. How God going to look at us? He got this whole example, this whole game plan, told us exactly how it's going to go, and then we still fall for the same traps that he laid before. What sympathy he going to have? Like, please, y'all crazy. Y'all had it way better. It's like he told, just like y'all should have told the people of Capernaum. This happened in Sodom and Gomorrah. They would have repented in sackcloth and ashes. I ain't got no sympathy for y'all. I'm here doing miracles in front of y'all. Y'all still not going to? Oh, please. We did that. If we did that for Sodom and Gomorrah, they would have repented in sackcloth and ashes. Gentiles, sinners, sodomizers, homosexuals, doing all these different things, they would have repented in sackcloth and ashes that I did this stuff. But y'all sitting here, call yourself righteous. Y'all got the son of the most high God standing right here in front of you, and you still sinning. God ain't going to have no sympathy for these people. And he'd be right when he do it. He'd be right when he do it. Where we up? Revelation. It's Revelation chapter 12. Read it again for me. 12, uh, 14. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that mm -hmm. she might fly into the wilderness, into her place. Go ahead and take me back to Exodus chapter 19. Exodus chapter 19, where we leave off. Uh, verse 4. It's Exodus chapter 19, verse 4. Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a particular treasure unto me above all people. He said, you're going to be a particular tre treasure unto me above what? All people. That ain't sound racist. For all that earth is mine. Books say above all people. Right? That thing, look, it's cool that the books say that when Jewish people are white. Right? When the white people, when this is talking about white Jewish people, I'm happy that the book say it. It's not talking about that now. It's, well, so you misinterpreting what it's saying. You don't understand. Y'all can't be Hebrew. It's going to be something. Right? Because that's racist at that point. If anything, the definition, by definition, anything, any preference of a race of, uh, over another race makes you racist. That's it. God is racist. That's why I tell people, racism isn't bad. I'm not saying that's truly racism. Racism isn't bad, right? Sin is bad, right? Being unequal is bad. Being unfair, unjust is bad. All that, bad. Racism, preferring one race above another, is not bad. I can prefer my own, right? I can prefer somebody else's if I want. I 100% prefer my own. <laughs> Either way, it ain't bad. Right? I'm sure everyone prefers their own. Some people probably don't. If they don't, ain't bad in itself. Just don't be unfair. Right. Treat people right. Don't sin. You good. Right? That book, it say we're going to be a peculiar people? That's a good word. I like that. Watch what Peter said. This is uh, 1 Peter chapter 2. It's 1 Peter, chapter 2, give me verse 9. Exodus chapter 19, a good chapter. A lot of people just gloss over it, go right to the Ten Commandments. It's a good chapter. There's a lot of stuff happening in Exodus chapter 19. A lot of people will miss it. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a this holy is, nation. This is 1 Peter. He said, you are a what? A chosen generation, a, a royal chosen priesthood. chosen generation. A royal priesthood. A royal priesthood. What did we read in Exodus 19? Exodus 19, chapter what? Chapter 19, verse 5. 
It's Exodus chapter 19, verse 5. Now, therefore, if you obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a particular peculiar treasure unto me above all people for all the earth is mine he said a peculiar treasure above all people right and then watch what he say next and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation a kingdom of priests and a holy nation you know it's another way to say that royal priesthood he said you're going to be a chosen generation a peculiar people right that's what Exodus 19 is saying peculiar people Peter says chosen generation he says Peter says royal priesthood. Exodus 19 says kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Right? Who do you think Peter is talking to? A lot of people think Peter, a lot of people, how you think Peter talking to some darn Christians? <laughs> right. Peter's not talking to Christians. He's talking to Hebrews specifically. It's not like, eh, maybe this. No, he's specifically talking to Hebrews. He's not talking to Hebrews and Gentiles and all that. No, he's talking directly to Hebrews. He tell keep reading, keep reading Peter. It's just people don't know the book. These things, when we read stuff in the book, we have to keep it in memory because we're gonna read something else in the book, and it should trigger a thought for us. Watch what Peter's talking about. When you see when you see royal priesthood, that has to trigger. The Most High God said we're gonna be a kingdom of priests, royal kingdom priests. Right? That has to trigger something for us. Keep going. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, mm -hmm. a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness. Now tell me I got exactly life. what Exodus 19 just said. Keep going. Which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Which were not a people, and are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have mercy. That has to trigger for us. As soon as that happened, we're supposed to say, Hosea. Why at the top? Hosea, that was Hosea's prophecy. Grab Hosea chapter 1. We should be done with Peter. We're good on Peter. In the same place I said that you aren't my people, it will be said that you are the sons of the living. What do you think Peter talking about? How are you going to be talking to Gentiles? He's quoting the book that's referencing directly to Hebrews. He ain't talking to no darn Christian. Ain't nothing in this book written to a Christian. They all tell you who they're writing to. None of them gonna start out saying, hey, Christian. You can't, you can't make yourself something and put yourself in the book. You have to become what God wants you to be. You can't just say, I'm gonna be this, and I'm gonna say the book talking about me. Let's just, I mean, let's just not pick on the Christian. Let's just say this is what the Christian thought, right? If, a, if we let a Christian or if God let a Christian do that, what stop a Muslim from doing the same thing? Don't the Muslims say, what does Muslim mean to them? Submitting to God. That's what they try to get that. All Muslim means submission to God. So Jesus was a Muslim, and Moses was a Muslim. Anybody who submits to God is Muslim. No! That's not what the book called us. You can't even translate that. We were never named submit to God. There's no, there's no title, no reference that we can look to in our book where we were called submit to God in any language. If we are called, if Muslim was a different word for disciple, I'm fine. We good. Right? If it was just, hey, disciple is disciple in English, disciple in, in, in uh, Islam is Muslim. Cool. It's not the same, though. We have to call ourselves what the book called. We have to fit. We cannot expect God to change his word to fit us. What hubris if we have if we think that's what's going to happen. We have to submit to him. We have to change what we do. Submit to God. Don't call yourself submit to God. Just do it. Live it. Grab a... Grab a... Uh, what verse I say? Hosea, what? Hosea, give me Hosea chapter 1. Let's just read the whole first chapter because I don't remember where it is exactly. Hold on. You can read it. Just, you can read the whole thing. The whole thing, good. All, right. All context. The word of the Lord that came unto Hosea, the son of Beri, in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Mm-hmm. 
And in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel, mm -hmm. the beginning of the word, the beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Hosea, Go and take unto thee a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms. He said, Go get you a wife that be sleeping around doing the extra. Right? Go get you a harlot for a wife. Right? This is the commandment from the Most High God to a prophet. Let's see what the reason is. All right, my fault. Read that thing again. The whole chapter. No, nah, where were you? Where? Uh, give me verse uh, nine. Then said God, "Call his name, Lo, am I? For ye are not my people, and I will not be your God." Uh huh. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as me shall be measured, nor numbered can well for him. shall be as the sand of the sea, which which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, "Ye are not my people," in the place where he said. You are not my people. There it shall be said unto them, you are the sons of the living God. In that same place, it's going to be said, you the sons of the living God. What else? Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head, and they shall come up out of the land, for great shall be the day of Jezreel. He told you, you ain't going to have no mercy, and you're going to be called not my people. Right? Grab uh, chapter 2. Give me the last verse, the last two verses maybe. Man, if I can turn the page. <clears throat> Little stuck. Yeah. And the earth shall hear the corn and wine and the oil, and they shall hear Jezreel. And I will sow her unto me in the earth, and I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy. And I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy. And I will say to them which are not my people, Thou art my people, and they shall say, Thou art my God. And I'm going to say to them, which were not my people, they are my people. Now let's go back to Peter and let's just see who Peter might have been talking about. It's uh, 1 Peter chapter 2. I don't know what verse. 1 Peter 2 verse 14. It's 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 14. First Peter no. chapter two verse ten. Verse ten. Nine. First Peter chapter two verse nine. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into this marvel his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Clearly talking about our people. Specifically. Right? Go to chapter 1. Watch this. Go to chapter 1, verse 1. This stuff is important. Peter, an apostle of, apostle of Yahshua the Messiah, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontius, Galatia. To the strangers? That's why they, do, that's why they think they're talking about to the strangers. Gentiles, right? Strangers what? Scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bith Bithynia. Why would you be a stranger if you're in those places and you're a Gentile? You're a stranger if you're not from those places. He's talking about the people that were scattered out of Israel into those places. They're strangers there. Right? You're strangers in these places. I'm talking to my people that don't belong in all these places. That's from where I'm from. Right? He's talking directly to our people, and he identifies it through the scripture of the language. He's referring back to scriptures, referring to us. That's book. Right? All these people. If you even look, look at Paul, right? Paul speaking direct. Go to pick a book. It don't matter from Paul. Pick one. <laughs> Corinthians. Corinthians. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. All these letters, they're they going to start off addressing it to who they address it to. Let's see how many are addressing the Christians. Let 
Let's do 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 1. Paul called to be an apostle of Yahshua the Messiah through the will of God and Sosthenes our brother unto the congregation of God which is at unto Corinth. Unto the congregation of God which is where? At Corinth. He's writing this. He's saying, hey, this is me and I'm with Sosthenes. We're writing to the congregation of God. Right? So when you make your little envelope, the what he would have right here is congregation of God in Corinth. Right? That's his address. The name and the address of where it's going, right? Over this side, he has from Paul, right? Let's see. What else he say? Keep going. To them that are sanctified in Yahshua. To Yashua, them that are what? Sanctified in Yahshua, the Messiah. That are sanctified. He's, he's right. I'm not writing to the sinner. A lot of people look at it and be like, see, Paul didn't explain who God was necessarily in his letter. You know why? Because he wasn't talking to somebody who didn't know God. He talking to the people who was what? Sanctified in Yahshua. Okay, so these people are already walking our walk. Keep going. To them that are sanctified in Yahshua the Messiah, called to be saints, with all that in every place call upon the name of Yahshua the Messiah, our Lord, both theirs and ours. Grace and grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the and from the Lord Yahshua the Messiah. He talking to the saints. Right? <laughs> we can go open up any other start of any of these books. He's gonna tell us the same thing. I'm talking to saints. He's talking to Gentiles. Notice when he reached out, he's just saying everybody in Corinth who's a saint, period. I don't care who you are, everybody. When Peter said, he said, listen, only the strangers, right? The strangers that were scattered out in these places. That's what I'm writing this on to. There's a difference. Paul was talking to Gentiles and to Hebrews. He's talking to anybody who get the message who worship the Most High God, right? That's why the conversation is different from Paul. That's why when Paul's speaking, it's clear in terms of encouraging people to do the right thing, discouraging incorrupt, I mean, uh, corrupt behavior. That's why when he's talking about negative behavior, he's not saying you're doing this. He's saying in most cases that other people are doing this. Stay away from those people who do that. There was a person I heard about who did this. Get them out of there. Right? He's telling, I'm not talking to the people that's doing it. I'm talking to y'all because y'all saints. Saints wouldn't be doing that stuff. That's why the conversation, if, you, if we were to go to Acts, we don't have to get it now, but if we go to Acts, it tells us about Paul having a conversation with philosophers who all they do all day is want to hear a new thing. And when Paul came by, they wanted to hear about what he preached. When he preached to them, his conversation was different from what we read in these letters. He talked to them, he was like, oh, I see you have an inscription about the unknown God. Well, let me tell you something about him. That, because he was talking to people, he wasn't talking to saints. They didn't know nothing about God. This, he's talking to people who already know about God. So the conversation is didn't. What different? What he's saying is different. Right? He's not explaining basics when it comes to God. Because these people already walked. Right? This wasn't, the book is not a beginning to end lesson in terms of the New Testament. Of this is what it is to God. It's that. That's why you need the Old Testament. That's where people go wrong. Paul doesn't explain to you who God is. He doesn't explain to you God's character. For a person who doesn't know or hasn't been introduced to God. The only way you get that is by reading Moses. By reading the, the, the prophets. By reading the history. That's why the Old Testament is important. That's why we go back. Right? Grab uh, Exodus for me. Go back to Exodus. Exodus chapter 19. Here's Exodus chapter 19. Where we leave off? In verse 5. People are so quick to throw away the Old Testament. So quick to just get rid of it or discount it or say it doesn't apply. You can't know God. You can't know him. Paul's not explaining that to you. Matter of fact, if we would have kept reading in Corinthians chapter 10, he would tell you. Do you not know that this stuff was an example for us? Exactly what we read now. He's going to tell you this was an example for us. He's not explaining it. He's telling you, go back and read it. And you're just going to throw it out. You, you're not, you don't know God. You're going to make a mess every time. What verse? Ten. I mean, five. Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. All right. 
and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak unto the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. And all the... And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do. Right? They all answered. And they said, Everything the Most High God said, we will do. Right? Right? Because, I mean, you look at it, all this stuff. Look at, look at what God just said. Watch. Go back. Go back two verses. Maybe three. You have seen what I have done unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Uh-huh. Now, therefore, obey my voice indeed, and keep my Cure your treasure unto me all people, for all the earth is mine. Uh -huh. You shall unto me a priest and a holy nation. Mm -hmm. These are the words which you shall speak unto the children of Israel. That's what, that's what God told Moses to speak. Now watch this. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. Mm -hmm. And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken will do. Uh -huh. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. Uh -huh. And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, What did the Lord say unto Moses? Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud that the people may hear when I speak with thee. He said, I'm coming to you in a thick cloud. The reason why I'm doing that is that the people will hear when I speak to thee. I'm going to talk to you, Moses, and I want these people to overhear. I just want them to eavesdrop on the conversation. I've been talking to you, but they haven't heard it, right? When, when Moses got there and talked to God, you know what happened? He'd go somewhere. God say something and Moses just come back like this is what God said. You know what we got to do? We got to trust Moses. Which is not really a problem because we saw Moses split the sea and get us up out of Egypt. Right? So it's not like we just super skeptical of Moses either because we saw Moses do some wild stuff. He said God let him do it. So we going to rock with what Moses is talking about. But the whole time it ain't like we witnessed it. It's just like something happened. Moses come back and he be like this is what God said. And since Moses did all this crazy stuff, we like we believe God is talking to Moses. Right? So it wasn't a big deal. But the most I God said, you know what? I'm going to come to you in a thick cloud. And the reason why I'm coming to you in a thick cloud, because I want them to hear me talk to you. Watch what he say next. Look at the reason. And believe thee forever. And do what? Believe thee forever. Why would they need to believe Moses forever? Why can't believe until later? Until Yahushua come? Why would they need to believe him forever? These people don't believe no law. They don't believe no book. How you believe God? He, he has it written in the book. He just told you, I'm doing this so that these people will believe you forever. Keep going. And Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord. Right? And the Lord said unto Moses, go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow and let them wash their clothes. He said, I'm about to do something real nice. Clean the people up real quick. Have them wash their clothes. God don't care. Come as you are, though. He said, Clean these people up. Have them wash their clothes. Why God care about you washing your clothes? Gotta be clean. I mean, the bum on the street could be, I mean, that could be Jesus sitting there. The God don't care. No, 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 no. That could be, don't you, I mean, he's smoking crack. But don't you say, please, I'm not listening to nothing y'all saying. Most like God said, clean these folks up. I'm about to do something special. Clean these folks up. I'm about to make sure they believe you forever. And y'all want to say the New Testament, I mean the Old Testament done away with. Y'all darn done away with. Grab uh, John chapter 5 for me. Let's hear what sweet Jesus got to say about it then. You know, there's a lot of people, they don't, they don't rock with it unless they come, you know what I'm saying, you got the books with the red writing. When Jesus talking, you know what I'm saying, they don't rock with it unless they got red writing. I'm going to show y'all some red writing then. To John chapter 5, verse 39. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. You were sitting here looking inside of the book, and you think you have eternal life. For what? And they are they which testify of me. Whole thing talking about Yahushua. You think we talking about Moses? You think we talking about a mountain? All that's talking about Yahushua. Then we talking about a, a dark cloud and a voice? All that's coming to talking about Yahushua. All right, keep going. You will not come to me that you might have life. Mm -hmm. I receive not honor from men, but I know you that you have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. Right? I come in my Father's name. Y'all ain't rocking with me, though. 
Somebody else coming with their own name. All right? They come with some Mormon, Baptist, Pentecostal, all these different things. That's their own name. They come with that. Y'all rock with it. I come with my father's name. My father called us disciples. All right? We come with that. No, 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 no. I don't know what y'all talking about. That's a cult. That make a whole lot of sense. I come with Christian. Nah, okay. I'll rock with that. I come with disciples. That's in the book. That's a cult. That make a whole lot of sense. I get it. I understand. He said, he said, what? Y'all come with what? He said, I come in my father's name, what? I come in my father's name, and ye receive me not. Okay. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. Boom. Book always right. Makes sense. Right? Makes sense. Book always right. Keep going. How can ye believe which receive honor one of another, and seek not the honor that comes from God only? Uh-huh. Do not think that I will accuse you to the father. He said, don't. So, he said, don't get it messed up. Don't think that. I'm going to accuse you to the father. I don't think I'm going to be pointing out all the flaws to the Father. He said, there's one not going to be doing that. Who is that? There is one that accuses you, even Moses, in whom you trust. Oh, it's going to be Moses. He said, Moses is going to be the one that accused you. I wonder why. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words? Old Testament done away with, though. He said here, this red writing is Yahweh Shua talking, it's Jesus talking. He just told you, had you believed Moses, you'll believe his word. So I just want to know who, who you think gonna understand the Old Testament without the um, understand the New Testament without the old. You gotta be calling Yahweh Shua a liar. You got to. I mean, I don't see how any other way you get to it. How do you think, after he just told you, if you believe him, you will believe me? How do you think you're gonna get to believe him any other way? The Christians like to quote it all the time. See, the law was just a schoolmaster. Okay, let me tell you. How are you going to get to college if you don't go to high school? You don't go to elementary. You don't go to, to middle school. All right, when you come up with it, I understand. All right, till then, we rock on what the books say. That's crazy. We have to be able to look into the Old Testament. It can't be that every time we jump into the Old Testament, people are like, oh, no, nah, we good. All right, I'll let me when y'all get back to Acts. I'll let me when y'all talking about the Gospels again. Ooh, Revelation, right? I'll, I'll let me when y'all talking about Revelation. Yeah, okay. This is stuff. All that stuff about we talk about Revelation, all that stuff ain't going to save nobody. All that stuff was written before anyway. This is what, this is what we talking about. Even, even when we get to the prophets, you, can't do, you ain't doing nothing with the book without the law. All of it got to, for everything we talking about, that thing got to come back to the law. And the law always going to come back to Yahushua. We talking about Gospels. The meat of the Gospels is in the, in the law. It all testifies of Yahushua, all of it. So how are you going to take a piece out when the rest of it is built on that same foundation? And that's the piece, if, the, if Yahushua's foundation is the law, you take the law out. How in the world do you think you testify to him? Don't make sense. We gonna teach some law. We gonna understand some law, All right? This Exodus, where we at? Exodus what? Nine. Give me Matthew. I ain't done yet. Give me, give me Matthew. These people don't. You know what I'm saying? You just got one verse. You just twisting that verse when he said believe. You know what I'm saying? Believe Moses. You know what I'm saying? For sure. I'm twisting it. All right. Give me Luke. We'll get Matthew too. But give me Luke first. Give me Luke chapter five, verse twelve. This is Luke chapter 5, verse 12. And it came to pass when he was in a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy, who seeing Yahushua fell on his face and besought him, saying, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. He said, you can make me clean if you want to, Lord, talking about Yahushua. Yeah. Master, if you want to make me clean, you can Right? That's and, called faith. Watch this. And he put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will, be thou clean. Mm -hmm. And immediately the, lepers, the leprosy departed from him. I mean, and this, let me show you how the Old Testament is done away with it. Watch this. And he charged him to tell no man, but go and show yourself to the priest and offer for thy cleansing according as Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. Uh, I did that for you. That was a miracle. But uh, your butt better go do what Moses commanded you to do. 
going to be done away where he's still telling people to follow his commandments. Grab, uh, grab Matthew chapter 23. This is what I really want. Matthew chapter 23, verse 1. Who's greater, Moses or Yahushua? Yahushua. There's no question Yahushua is greater. Right? But even with his greatness, watch the authority that he allows to Moses. Watch this. It's Matthew chapter 23, verse 1. Then Yahushua, then spake Yahushua to the multitudes and to the disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. They sit in whose seat? Moses' seat. If you in Moses' seat, I wonder what's supposed to happen. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. When they are in Moses' seat, in other words, when they're telling you the words of Moses, when they're telling you the law, when they're teaching you the law, everything they tell you to do, do it. Right? That's what he means by Moses' seat. They're teaching people what the law says. When, the, when they telling you what the law says, do it. Don't do after the stuff that they do, though, because they don't keep the law. They run in their darn mouth. they hypocrites. When they tell you what the Lord to say, do it. In other words, when they read in Scripture, do it. When they read in Scripture, do it. Yeah. How are you going to say that it's done away with? And this is, if you, I mean, if you're a Christian and you love Jesus and we read what he's saying, how can you stand back and say the law is done away with, the Old Testament, that you can't do it? That's why it's important to learn. It's a lot of this stuff you'll miss. That's why when we say we Hebrews, it's just like that thing fly all over their heads. They can't get it. It's because you missed so much of the book that when we read this stuff, all this stuff is tying back. They think we in a whole other world. They like, I don't know how you get that out of it. I know you don't because you haven't read over half of the book. Once you read the other half, you will see that there's a lot more meaning than what you think it is. You connect and dots it ain't there. You have somebody tell you this is what it means. This is what it means. And it doesn't mean that. We can get the real meaning. Where we at? Exodus? Yeah. Try to wrap this up. I don't even know if we're going to get out of Exodus 19. Yeah, on Exodus 19.10. All right, Exodus 19.10. It's too much. I told you, there's a lot in this Exodus 19. We can sit on this thing forever. Is Exodus chapter 19, what verse 10? 10? Exodus chapter 19, verse 10. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes. Am I going crazy? That light wasn't on just now, wasn't it? It's, it's flickering. Yeah? Yeah. Well, say, I know I was looking up and that thing wasn't on. All right. And be ready against the third day, for the third day the Lord will come down. On what day? The third day. Uh oh. What does that remind us of? Yeah, oh, sure. Yeah, oh, sure. They say third day. We know what we're talking about. Keep going. The Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. He said, I'm going to show up in front of everybody. Right? All the people on Mount Sinai. What else happened? And thou shalt set, set bounds unto the people round about, saying, Take heed to yourselves that ye go not up into the mount, or mm -hmm. touch the border of it. Whosoever touches the mount shall be surely put to death. Mm -hmm. There shall not a hand touch it, but he shall surely be stoned or shot through. Mm -hmm. Whether it be a beast or a man, it shall not live. When the trumpet sounds long, they shall come up to the mountain. Mm -hmm. And Moses went down from the mountain to the people and sanctified the people, and they washed their clothes. Mm -hmm. And he said unto the people, Be ready against the third day. Come he said, Be ready when? Against the third day. Against the third day. Watch this. This is Luke chapter 24, real quick. Luke chapter 24, verse 13. It says Luke chapter 24, verse 13. We got to be ready against the third day, it says. We know what the third day represents. Books say he had to be in the belly. I mean, just as Jonah was in the belly of the whale, all right, belly of the fish, he had to be in the uh, heart of the earth for three days and three nights. All right, that's what Yahushua told us. And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus which was from Jerusalem, about threescore furlongs. Mm -hmm. And they talked together all of these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Yahushua himself drew near and went with them. Who did? 
Yahushua himself. But what happened? But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. So this is Yahushua walking with them, but they was put in a position where they wouldn't know him. They wouldn't understand that this was Yahushua talking to them. Right? Let's see. What manner of communications are these that you have one to another as you walk and are sad? So Yahushua asked them, why y'all, you know what I'm saying, what y'all talking about amongst each other and y'all sad? Right? But they didn't know it was Yahushua. They watched what they answered. And the one of them whose name was Cleopas answering said unto him, Are you only a stranger in Jerusalem and has not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? Yeah, like, where, where are you from? You don't know what happened around here? And he said unto them, What things? The things concerning the Yahushua the Nazarite. Right? Let's see. And they said unto him, Concerning Yahushua of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty indeed in word before God and all the people. Right? He said he's a prophet. He is mighty indeed and in word before God. Why, Cleopas, he's looking at, he like, man, where you, where you from? You don't know what happened around here. You ain't heard about Yahushua, what a prophet? You from you don't know Gator. <laughs> and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. Uh -huh. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And besides all this, today is the third day since these Today is the died. which day? The third day. Uh-oh, what happened? At, so he said this is the third day. Today, what happened? What else happened on this day, Cleopas? Yeah, and certain women also of our company made us astonished when they were early at the sepulcher. Uh huh. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels which said that he was alive. Uh huh. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found it, even so as the women had said. Uh huh. But him they saw not. Then he said unto them, That's oh, what Yahweh sure said unto him. Watch it. O oh, fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Uh huh. Ought not the Messiah had to suffer these things and to enter into his glory? He said, man, y'all crazy. Y'all supposed to know it of this stuff. Ain't this exactly what was supposed to happen? Later on, y'all should have revealed itself to him. On which day? The third day. Third day. That's why, that's why the Most High God in Exodus 19, he said, be, be ready against the third day. After that, I'm going to show up in front of all the people. All right? I'm going to show up in front of all the people. You think this is talking about? Y'all sure we talking about whole book? He said, "Search the scriptures, whole book." All right, grab uh, grab Exodus nineteen again. In Where we beginning leave at Moses and the prophets. Oh, okay, that's good too. That was the next verse. Read that there for my fault. In beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And expounded means what? Thoroughly explained. He thoroughly explained everything. He had to start in one place. That thing got to be Moses. He told, he, most like God did tell Moses, he said, I'm going to make sure that these people believe you forever. Anybody that, anybody that's going to be in the kingdom, is no way you're going to get in without believing Moses forever. Because you got to believe Yahushua. And the only way you're going to believe Yahushua is if you believe Moses. So there's no way you're getting in without believing Moses forever. This is a package deal. I mean, you got to take it all or you take nothing. That's just how I go. You can't just say, uh, well, I rock with Yahushua, don't really rock with Moses. I rock with Peter, don't really rock with Paul. That's all y'all mess up. There's a young lady that's, that's online. You know, she be going, she just need a teacher. I tell her all, all the time. Every time I see her, I'm like, yeah, you just need a teacher. You'll be all right. All right? She out there struggling, cussing, doing all this other wild stuff, still in the flesh and doing all that stuff. Every time I tell her, just, you know, just relax. You just need a teacher. You know what I'm saying? She, she struggled with Paul. She's like, man, you know, Paul, he just say some stuff that's hard to understand. You know what I'm saying? Some people don't get it. Whenever I see Hebrew Israelites saying that, you know what I'm saying? I be like, yeah, I know. I know exactly where you're going with this. They try to make it look like it ain't them, right? They be like, yeah, some people just don't understand what Paul said. A.K.A. your butt don't understand what Paul's talking about, right? That's why I always read it. I, every time I see him, I hit him in the inbox. If you need some help understanding Paul, just let me know, right? I tell you the same thing, you know what I'm saying? Just all you need is a teacher. Trust me, it all makes sense. Ain't nothing Paul said that's against anything. Right? Your butt just said, your mind is against it. Right? A carnal mind is what with God? An enemy. What does enmity mean? Beef. Fight. Against. Fight. My mind is against God. That's why when Paul talking about, I'm looking like, my mind is against God because I'm still carnal. I'm still in the flesh. If all I'm talking about is sex, and all my, everything in my mind is darn sex and cussing and, and feelings, how people treat other people, all these different things, right? The relationships that's going on in the world and all this messy stuff. What do you think? How do you think I am? I'm in my 
my flesh. Nothing I'm talking about is spiritual. None of my conversation is spiritual. And I'm supposed to be like just in line with God? No, that it doesn't work that way. We have to be able to see. We have to be able to diagnose. The reason why we got this book is to diagnose ourselves. We're supposed to be able to look at it and be like, I'm lining up, I'm not lining up, I'm not lining up, I'm not lining up, I'm lining up. Okay, let me line all the way up and we good. Once you line all the way up, then you can say, okay, I'm, I got a clean bill of health. Other than that, you're supposed to say, we sick, boy. We sick. Heal me. Change me. And you keep praying and you keep reading and you keep obeying and you change from the inward parts. Not the little fake, fake change where you good for a day and the next day you back on it. You have to really dig into this book. You're not going to do it without learning Moses. You're not going to do it without reading Exodus 19. I just don't see how it can be done. Where do we leave off? He said, uh, Exodus 19, verse 15. This is Exodus chapter 19, verse 15. Let's see what we got. We just going to wrap up this chapter and take off. You know what I'm saying? We have to get to the commandments next time. And he said unto the people, Be ready against the third day. Come not at your wives. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders. Yeah, come not at your wives. Yeah. Because what is that? I mean, you got a wife. I mean, marry to her, though. I mean, that's your wife. And you did it under God. Is that spiritual or flesh? Flesh. I don't care how much you love your wife and how much God gave her to you or God gave you your husband and all that. Stuff. At the end of the day, what is it? You want clean. It's flesh. He said this. We talking about something spiritual. He said, man, I'm about to show up and show y'all something. Don't come against your wife. Don't come on. Don't come at your wife. Not come again. He said, don't come at your wife. In other words, don't be with your wife. We about to do something else right now. You just, you leave all the flesh stuff. If that's all your conversation, you fled. You have to be able to. Y'all don't understand the mind of God. The, the, when y'all look, y'all don't understand the mind of God. And it's because nobody has taught the people the mind of God. Yes, and I'm among you in the camp. You got to be clean. You got to be clean. You think I'm about to step down there and y'all doing the hoobie jibby? That's crazy. Relax. Calm down. You have plenty of time. Right. There's a special moment right now. Relax. Separate yourself. Do what I told you to do. Don't touch the mountain. Set up a barrier. Watch what Mo... Keep reading. Watch this. And he said unto the people, Be ready against the third day. Come not at your wives. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount and the voice of the trumpet exceedingly loud so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. Uh -huh. And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God and they stood at the nether part of the mount. The nether part. When they say nether part, they said they stood, they but at the bottom. Right? Nether part just talking about that's the bottom of the mount. Right? You don't bring it. He told you, do not touch it. Don't come near it. Otherwise, we should. Go ahead, read it. And, and Mount Sinai was altogether on a smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire. Uh -huh. And the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mount quaked greatly. Uh huh. So it was an earthquake, lightning, And when the voice thunder. of the trumpet sounded long and waxed louder and louder, Moses spake, and God answered him by a voice. Uh huh. And the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai on the top of the Hold mountain. Hold on. Moses spake, and God answered him what? By a voice. We had earthquake. You know what this reminds me? Grab, uh, grab 1 Kings. Hold on, we got there. We're going to come right back. Grab 1 Kings, 1 Kings chapter 19. Watch what happened to Elijah. It's 1 Kings chapter 19. You can jump on. We don't have to read the whole thing. You jump on down to like verse 11. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great strong wind rent the mountains. Right? So it was a big old strong wind. It rent the mountains. What happened next? And breaking pieces the rocks before the Lord. Uh-huh. But the Lord was not in the wind. He said he wasn't in that wind, though. Keep going. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. But he wasn't in the earthquake either. What else? And after the earthquake, a fire. Uh-oh. It was a big fire. What else? But the Lord was not in the fire. But he wasn't in the fire. But what was the Lord in? And after the fire, a still small voice. A still small voice. What up? And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his hand and his mantle and went out and stood in the entering of the cave. Because he is in that voice. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? He was in that voice. Right? He is in that voice. You're going to hear from him from the voice. Right? 
that has to call back to us. How did the Most High God show up to the uh, Moses? He showed up to him in the void. Showed yeah. up to him in fire. A burning bush. A burning bush, right? Yeah. Moses might have made a mistake. He might have been like, God is in the fire. So that's why the second time he come around, he said, let me show all the people. What do you, what do you think? He going to show up in a fire? No, because everybody going to start attaching that like, oh, God show up in fire. No, he said, let me do something different. Here go a whole bunch of lightning, some earthquakes. We just read all that in Exodus. It was lightning, earthquakes, thunders, right? No doubt the wind was blowing too. Now after all of it, he said, here go my boys. Right? Here go my boys. I'm in that. Just follow his voice, his word. That's what it come down to. The rest of this stuff is preliminary. Right? The rest of this stuff is just on the side. You know what I'm saying? That's peripheral. You know what I'm saying? You see, you know, you kind of walk and you see something from the side of you, side view. I mean, it's there, but it's peripheral. That thing ain't the focus. Right? The focus got to be the word. Got to be his voice. Everything else is just like, yeah, all right, if I catch it, I catch it. You know what I'm saying? But if you stick with his voice, you're in the right direction. You're doing the right thing. You're moving. All right? Keep going. Watch what he said. This is it Exodus? Yeah, Exodus 19. This is Exodus 19. chapter 19, verse what? 19. This is Exodus 19, 19. See if we can try to wrap this up. And when the voice of the trumpet sounded long and waxed louder and louder, Moses spake, and God answered him by a voice. Mm -hmm. And the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mountain. And pay attention. <sighs> grab, grab Deuteronomy. Grab Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 10. All right. He appeared in the fire, he had earthquakes, all this other stuff. You saw no image. It's Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 10. You can do it off memory. You already know where I'm going. Especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Horeb, when the Lord said unto me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth. It's talking about the same event. Watch what he said. And that they may teach their children, and that and ye came near and stood under the mountain, and the mountain burned with fire unto the midst of heaven, with darkness, clouds, and thick darkness. Mm -hmm. And the Lord spake unto you out of the midst of the fire. Ye heard the voice of the words, but saw no similitude. Only he said, ye heard a voice. saw no simil similitude. You only heard the voice. The Lord is in the voice. Right? He had to make sure he shows a difference. Otherwise, y'all start worshiping stuff. We can look into it. Let's go to let's go back to uh, Exodus 19. Let's try to wrap it up. And when you the voice of the trumpet sounded long and waxed louder and louder, Moses spake, and God answered him by a voice. And the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mount, and the Lord called Moses up to the top of the mount, and Moses went up. Uh -huh. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go down, charge the people, lest they break through the break through unto the Lord to gaze, and many of them perish. All right? He said, Most high God already knew. He was like, Listen. Remember, he already told him, Don't nobody touch it. You touch it, you're going to be stoned or shot through. Right? He said, Man, these people, you know what I'm saying? They ain't going to mess around and gaze and try to understand. Because Moses go up. He can't, he can't see Moses no more. It's a big old mountain. They're looking up like, you know what I'm saying? So that's why he told them to put barriers around it. So, you know, they're going to be like, you know what I'm saying? You think, where do you think Moses went? Let's try to, you know what I'm saying? Let's try to see what Moses got. He's like, nah, go and go down there. See about them boys. Make sure they relax. You know what I'm saying? Let's see. Lest they break through unto the Lord to gaze, and many of them perish. Uh -huh. And let the priests also which come near unto the Lord sanctify themselves, lest the Lord break forth upon them. Uh -huh. And Moses said unto the Lord, The people cannot come up to Mount Sinai, for thou chargest us, saying, Set bounds about the mountain, sanctify it. Yeah, hey, like Moses, like, you know what I'm saying? We already put the barrier around. They, can't, they ain't going to be able to get up here. Oh, that's what God said. And the Lord said unto him, Away, get thee down, and thou shalt Boy, get your butt down there. Ain't nobody saying that. He was like, Moses was like, nah, I mean, you, you can imagine Moses. Moses probably said it all calm and stuff. But I was like, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Go on down there and check on them boys make sure they don't break through. And the priests too. You know what I'm saying? Make sure they sanctify yourself. Mel, I'm going to break out against they butt. Moses was like, nah, the people, you know what I'm saying? He probably said it all calm and humble. Now, the people, you know what I'm saying? You told us to put the bounds, the bounds around it. The people can't even get butt. Get your butt down there and check on they butt. <laughs> Moses was like, you know what I'm saying? God said it. Got to go on down there. Let's see what he's talking about. The Lord said unto him, Away, get thee down, and thou shalt come up, thou and Aaron with thee. But let not the priests and the people break through to come up unto the Lord, lest he break forth upon them. 
So Moses went down unto the people and spoke unto them. He had to go and speak unto the people. Now remember what we just read there. Because we look at it and be like, man, God, you know what I'm saying? God ain't even give him a chance. You know what I'm saying? But we're going to see later on in the history. Yeah, God was probably right. If Moses didn't go back down there, they probably would have been halfway up the mountain. Like, man, okay, I think he's still up there. Most of God would have broke out against all they but. Right? You look at the history and you'd be like, man, God was probably right. You know, that God doing that probably protected them at that moment. He was like, y'all can't mess this one up. I need this to go through. I'll let y'all mess it up later. But right now, y'all can't mess it up. Go on back down there and check on it. All right? I mean, let's just read a little bit in chapter, you know what I'm saying, chapter 20. Read just a little bit and then we'll get up out of here. Give me the first couple of verses at least. You, ain't gonna, you know what I'm saying? Just give me the first. That's kind, first. Of, that's kind of tough, man. What? Like this whole chapter. You, you gonna need, we're going to need a... Uh... We're going to need some time for this one. Chapter 20? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, no, we definitely not going to get into chapter 20. We're just going to, a little intro. Just, you know what I'm saying? You know how you, like, kind of segue, you know what I'm saying? We're going to kind of segue in the next week. That's all. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. All right, so this is after Moses go down and tell the people. Then the Most High God starts speaking to all of the people. He said, I am, he announced who he is, I am Yahuwah, your God, who brought you out of Egypt, right? Remember, whole time we've been hearing from God, it's come through Moses, right? God or Aaron, right? God speak to Moses, Moses tell Aaron, Aaron tell us, right? Or sometimes Moses tell us, all right? We haven't heard, it's not like we heard God directly. Now this opportunity, it's crazy, it's already been crazy. Now we hear God for ourselves. We hear all this craziness, fire, smoke, wind, and, and, and thunder, and lightning, and clouds. And all of a sudden, we hear a big old voice coming out. I am the Yahuwah, your God, who brought you out of Egypt. Right? Keep going. God shall have no other gods before me. That's where he starts. You won't have any other God before me. Why would he start that? We just came out of Egypt. The book already told us that he showed us judgments against who? Their gods. Against their gods. We is in Egypt. There's no doubt that we picked up their foolishness. He is like, let me go ahead. Before we even go any further. We three months in. Y'all made it three months. Let's talk. <laughs> right? Y'all made it three months. Let's talk. You're not going to have any other God before me. Get rid of them. Clean yourself up. Don't touch a woman. Let's have some conversation now. Y'all want to talk to me? I'm here now. We're going to talk about it next week. We're going to go into it. We're going to look at some of the commandments. We're going to try to figure out where the Ten Commandments come from. Right? Why is it called the Ten Commandments? Right? We're going to look at are there any other commandments? Which commandments are necessary? Which commandments? And we're going to spend some time on it. Not just one week, you know what I'm saying? We're going we're gonna to spend some time on these commandments. Understanding the commandments related to the law. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, to the, uh, to the priest. Right? Understanding the commandments related to how we govern ourselves as a country. Right? Understanding the commandments how, how, uh, of how we deal with our relationships and all these different things. We're going to look at all the commandments that was put in under for our, our, our living space when we move into Israel. We're going to try to get an understanding. And then let's see if the book make a lot more sense to us as we move forward. All right? Any questions? Let's pray in. Or pray out.